y'all it's hope here at crafty hope and welcome i had the itch to just play in one of my junk journals i popped this one open and found it had a single page in it and for one thing i had a little bit of white acrylic paint sitting off to the side i had been using it on one of my assemblage projects and was like you know what i don't want to have it go to waste so i'm going to throw it in a junk journal and you can see i just kind of spread it out with a paintbrush there and then i'm scraping it with like a key card now the page that's that's there is a piece I believe it's newsprint that had some inks and whatnot on it and yeah I was just like let's see what I can throw at this thing so I really enjoyed the blendy techniques or the blendy look I got in one of my previous junk journal spreads so that's what I was trying to kind of go for in this one is to get some of that blendy color because I really did enjoy that and so while that acrylic paint was still wet, I went in with this creamy three-in-one crayon. It's a, called a Colorex crayon. I picked it up, I think, at the thrift store at some time. But it's it's kind of like a gelato, um, creamy like that. So I blended in a little bit of teal. I'm coming in with a dark blue. Going to blend that in as well. Like I said, this... The acrylic paint was still wet so it it kind of helped me to do the blending but also these are super super creamy so yeah and I'm just making these colors kind of touch so that th I can blend them together now I'm going to grab a wet paintbrush here I believe I think that's what I do let's let's see um first I had to find one so I'm going to grab a paintbrush, wet it, but not too wet, and just, again, blend these colors a little bit more using both that wet paintbrush and my finger because, you know, getting my hands in it, uh, I can be a very tactile person, and getting my hands in it really helps me feel like I, I am part of that art. So it did, I guess make the colors more pale because both you know that's white acrylic paint and also wetting it kind of fades them out a little but it's okay um it comes through in the end once it's dry it's it's all good so i'm wiping my hands down and i think i'm going to go ahead and dry this page since i have got it all nice and wet let's see yes use my heat tool to dry it and then decide to do a little bit of collage and y'all this is the only piece of paper i'm going to collage basically into this onto this page so i thought that was kind of interesting i'm using my uhu glue stick just to kind of do it quickly and it's hair down. I don't know what this little paper was. I believe it was something in some Happy Meal or something somebody sent me. In fact, I, for some reason, I'm thinking it was Tiffany Goffsmith of Southern Gals Designs, I believe, um, sent this to me. But it's it's an odd little piece of paper. It's kind of, it's like a thicker newsprint. I'm not sure what it is or, yeah. But I thought it was kind of neat. So it's going down. And it adds that pop of darkness in here that I felt this page kind of needed with all the like pastel -y and white that's going on in there. And really just bringing it around. I, this might be the last piece I put down, actually. Um, no rhyme or reason. Again, I, I do like to collage a lot in my pages and typically go for much more than that. In fact, it's usually my first step, but I, I wanted, I was feeling coming in with that blendiness. Now I've brought in this ledger script stamp. I think that's what it's called from Tim Holt and some stays on ink. I, I'm going with the stays on because that means it is. Oh, actually, no, I didn't go with the stays on, did I? <laughs> I decided to go with distress oxide and black soot. And um, yeah, and I'm just taking this off the back, going to put that black soot on there. And then put it in the background. This is really just to add a touch more texture and also help those, the black collage papers I put down, um, not feel so isolated and a little more, you know, like there's more black running throughout there. So it's, yeah, it just felt like the right thing to do. And I've used, y'all right now, this is the other than my hand carved stamps. This is the only stamp I have out in my, like w within reach. So I've used it a couple times in a few things. So, um, 
I'm going to put it away. You saw that was just a little bit of texture there. And I'm trying to think what I'm going to do next. And yep, thinking, thinking. And I decided again, for some reason, I want to pull in some some doodling. So I've got this, what is it? A Posca paint pen in like a light blue. It's kind of keeping with that cool colors theme I've got. In fact, this whole page is all a cool colors theme, which are my favorites. And doing just some little like rainbow-ish doodles in a couple places. Now these are not important again. I keep saying again, I'm doing it again, again. Um, <laughs> This is just to add some texture to to the background. And I really didn't know what the focal was going to be. But yeah, I, I wanted to start with a bunch of texture. Now here is a white pen. This is a new to me white pen. It is a Pentel. Oh, I can't think what they called it. Hmm. I'll have to I'll have to see if I can find a link to it on Amazon. I found it for two dollars at Pop Shelf. I, I don't know if y'all have ever been to one of those. It's like a Dollar General brand store, but kind of more less dollar. It's like it doesn't have all as much food stuff and those kind of things that Dollar General does. Anyway, I will try to link it if I can find it. But I'll at least put the name of it below so you can keep an eye out for it. And I had never tried a Pentel White pen so I thought well I'm gonna grab it we're gonna see how it does so and it does pretty well y'all I was I was pretty happy with it we'll see how it does next time I use it now that I've put it on top of some of those things but I just doodled with it a little bit got some more texture and mark making in there and have now decided to pull in some watercolors this is a basic watercolor 10 it's a 20 no 48 set I believe of watercolors and it's, the colors are all very, I don't know if I want to say saturated, bright maybe? And I wanted a pastel, like a violet, like a pastel purple. So I'm pulling out a really nice purple that I like and adding some white to it. You can't, can't really see it because the white's on another part of that palette. And painting, again, trying to get this blendiness going in here and cover up, you know, I really like with the watercolors how it blends um I don't know how it soaks into the edges of the paper that I've torn so here you can see I'm adding a little white to that I guess but when I go across those papers that I've collaged down the torn pieces seem to soak up some of that watercolor a bit more than other areas so yeah it's kind of interesting and I'm playing I, I really liked how the watercolor did in my last one so that's what I'm going with um when I was kind of going around some of those rainbows a little like trying not to go over them just go up to the edge of them I think I'd end up going over them now of course I'm gonna splatter a little bit of that purple around or that violet around on my page and then I'm thinking and I think what I decided to do I pulled out yes this art philosophy metallic watercolors and grab get a little bit of the that black that like hematite color there because it is metallic I'm gonna water it down and I'm gonna splatter it as well it went really nicely with that the black paper that whatever that was, that Happy Mail paper that I had collaged down. So it helped kind of, again, continue that a bit more even than my stamps did. And my stamps probably got blurred out some because that was the Distress Oxide. Now, I've decided to come in with a... A photograph. This is a vintage photograph I recently picked up in my th latest thrifty haul. A bag of old photos, which I thought was pretty awesome. And this photo was in there. And I thought, again, it's kind of got a lot of darkness to it. Which I thought, again, helped bring in that the black that is on those papers I collage down. And then I've got this piece of lace that has like a plaster technique over the top of it and it was just in my stash and I really I thought that the lace really echoed the oh like the lines that are in that paper I collage down like the really random lines that are in there I don't know how to explain it like the holiness of it or something and so I was like yeah this lace will be perfect but it really 
isn't dark enough to do much. So I kept trying to bring in something else. I, I don't know. I kept picking up fabrics. I'm, this video was very much longer. Um, really actually the longest part will come here in a few minutes, but, um, I finally just decided to stick with just that single piece of lace and I'm going to stitch onto that photo. First, I'm, I am going to tack down my lace so it stays where I want it. It doesn't move around. And I use my Uhu to do that again, just because I'm just trying to get to stay in place. And I've got this blue tealy aqua e thread on a needle. And I think I broke it down into three. And I did because there's six strands in embroidery floss and I pulled it apart so that I'm just sewing on with three of them. And making X's. And I'm doing it all the way across the sky up there. Sticking solely to the sky of this. I do have this sped up like four times. So I was methodically happily stitching. Um, but I've sped this up. So, you, I want, so I want you to see all of the stitching. But I didn't, you know, you don't have to see it in slow-mo. <laughs> it's just little X's across it. I did stick to an odd number because... Uh, what is it? Odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. So yeah, I'm trying to two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, eleven little <laughs> X's across the sky. And then I'll tie it off, this thread off in the back. Um, this was a fun little thing. I don't, it felt like I did it pretty quickly, but really this was an hour long process for me. Uh, a lot of it went to the stitching and then, like I said, the thing that comes next because y'all, I had the hardest time finding a sentiment for this. And of course I try to tie it up and everything. So I have tied that off. I'm going to snip it and then I'll I believe I'm going to grab my, oh no, I'm going to get that other three strands of thread that I pulled off of uh, the embroidery floss. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm thinking I'm going to ink up the edges of this photo with my Distress Oxide in black soot, bringing that back in there. Um, because the photo is slick, I'll use my fingers to kind of like make sure it's rubbed in a little bit. Yeah. And then I will grab that, yeah, I'm going to wipe my hands. Because that black soot, just like regular soot, I guess will get everywhere <laughs> if you don't clean up a little bit. Okay, back to it. I am thinking, yeah, I'm going to pull up that, yeah, there's three strands I have there. Pull them apart just a little bit to f yeah, separate them a little bit more. Of course, they're getting tangled and doing what thread does naturally, which is just tangle up. And that's fine. I'm going to put it down on to, yeah, behind the photo. And the more I mess with it, the, the like more tangly it got. So I was like, I can't mess with this a whole lot. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my, what is that? Fabri-Tac straight onto my page and then stick the thread into it. I'll use a silicone little thing. It's a face mask thing. Um, yeah, put that, use that to press that in and then put Fabri-Tac on. You can see what I'm doing, putting Fabri-Tac on the back of my photo. Now you can see the back of that photo was black. I believe that this is a Polaroid of some kind. Um, there were a lot of Polaroids in that bag of photos I got. All right, so I cut out like, y'all, like 10 minutes of going through uh, sticker, sentiment stickers and book pages and anything I could come up with to find a sentiment. And I finally settled on this, this sentiment, which here says, what a paradise you two are going into. Um, I had one that said something about the house on Jackson street and, um, happiness thing anyway. And I finally decided that this little cement was all I needed. Yeah. And I kept thinking, do I want to add some of these other ones? But no. And like I said, I was like 10 minutes of like sifting through all kinds of things. And that helped get this video down because <laughs> I took all that out. So don't think this just flew together. It, I took my time with it. So I glued that down with my Fabri-Tac since the front of that is so slick. And then I've got this 
It is a rollerball pen from the Dollar Tree. I love it because the ink, when you first put it down, is very wet. And you can take a wet paintbrush and kind of make it blendy. So I did that. I activated some of it. I'm going to do this randomly around on the page in, well, at least two spots. I'm looking at the journal, maybe three. And once that is done, blending these out, I am going to call this page done. Again, this was something I just jumped into and decided I wanted to play. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm hoping to come back with something else different soon. But right now I'm really enjoying just coming into a junk journal and experimenting with the things that I like from each of them moving from one to the next. Like I really like the blendiness in, in that last one maybe not the last one maybe the one before and was like you know what let's do that some more see what happens I've got this white stuff here so keep in mind that you know you don't have to have it's a particular idea when you get into one of your journals just start playing think of what you liked in the last one and expand on that all right guys if you like this make sure you give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button it really helps me out and I appreciate that you came and spent this time with me thanks so much bye